In this video, I'm gonna share with you the seven must-haves to ensure that you're converting as many visitors into customers, and we're starting right now. Hey everybody, this is Antoine Dupont and welcome to another video. If you are new here and you're looking for tactical tips to help you grow your business, then please subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss a thing. All right, let's just jump right in. You have a website or you're thinking of having a website or you're redesigning your website and you're not quite sure whether it's performing as best as it should. So there are seven must have for all service based businesses and pretty much every type of business that you should have on your website. And the first one is above the fold clarity. Now let me explain to you what I mean by above the fold clarity. Above the fold means anything that I can see with having to scroll. It's a reference to how a newspaper is actually folded in a stand. You only see half of it, right? So you don't have to open up. So that's called above the fold. In your case, it's what visitors will see without having to scroll. And above the fold is super important because this is where where the vast majority of your visitors will keep scrolling or will bail out. You know what, dude? I'm out of here. And you don't have a lot of time. I have seen some statistics that actually says that it's like three to five seconds. Some say five to seven. Basically, overall, you just let's just say you got five to seven seconds at best for people to make a decision. Am I staying or am I leaving? So it's super important that you nail this and you do it right. And here is how you do it right. First of all, I call it above the full clarity. The vast majority of websites out there lack clarity, which means it's confusing, which means there's too much navigation. There's too many things for me to look at. There's too many pictures that are scrolling. The titles are not clear. I don't even know what the call to action says, or it says learn more or more info. It's like, I don't want to learn anything. It's like, what do you do? So my rule of thumb for above the fold is less is more. First of all, I would actually have you take a look at the navigation and all the icons if you have icons out there and then just really look at it and then decide, do I need to have all this? And I would tell you that the vast majority of the time we can literally take half of it off. It really doesn't help us in trying to convert people because it gives them too many choices to look at and it confuses the vast majority of people. Your social media icons, for example, when someone lands on your website, they don't need to see that. That should be lower in your website, probably in the footer. If they want to connect with you on social media, they know where to find it. They don't belong in the upper right hand corner. All it does is it confuse people and might take them someplace else instead of converting here on the website. The next thing is a lot of websites have multiple images that it's called a carousel or whatever you want to call it. What we found is that 80% of people will never look past the first image. So you're basically putting a lot of images for people to look at that nobody actually looks at it. So one single powerful image is really all you need. Now that image should convey the happy results I get when I work with you. And the image should speak for itself. It shouldn't be confusing. I should have to scratch my head as like, what is, I don't get it. For example, there's a dentist in my town that has a beautiful scenery of the beach and the building and that, and it's like, it doesn't make any sense. Like I'm going to the dentist, why am I looking at condominiums and apartment buildings on the beach? It makes absolutely no sense. So the image should actually convey a happy result of using your services or buying your products. And the next thing you need to have is the title of the website. And a lot of websites get it wrong. What I see is people like saying, for example, like landscaping services or cosmetic dentistry in Palm Beach County. The problem here is you're describing what you're doing and that doesn't help me in making a decision. And chances are I was already looking for a dentist or a landscaping company. So when I land on your website, I already know what I'm going to get landscaping or dentistry. So why mention it again? It makes no sense. What you should be thinking instead is what are the benefits that they will get? 
with working with you. The question they have in their mind is, how is this going to make my life better? Or what are going to be the benefits for me? So taking the example of the landscaping company, instead of describing landscaping services, it should say something like, have your lawn be the envy of the neighborhood. And instead of saying affordable dentistry or dentistry in this town, just say something like a smile you can be proud of. And the final thing that you need to have about of the fold is a clear and direct call to action. For the call to action, I see a lot of learn more or get started. Let me put it in those terms. I don't want to learn more anything. What do I want to learn more? I don't want to learn more. I want you to fix my problem and get started. Get started what? I don't even know what that means. I don't want to start anything unless I know what I'm getting started for. So you may think it's clever, but it's more confusing that it's clever. What your call to action needs to be, it needs to actually describe what is the first step of working with you is going to be. It needs to kind of like take them in that direction. So for example, if the first step of working with you is getting a quote or getting a consultation, then the call to action should be get a quote or get a consultation. That's a much better call to action than get started, but let's make that call to action even better. Instead of get a quote, let's make it get your quote. And if we wanna make that call to action even better with a little bit of sense of urgency is get your quote today. Now, if you do those simple improvements above the fold, that's going to go a long way to convert a lot more customers. And let's go to point number two. And the second thing you need to do on your website to convert more customers is having a clear value proposition with empathy. A clear value prop with empathy is a couple of sentences, a small paragraph that actually describe what the benefits are of working with you, but also coming from a sense of empathy, like nobody should have to or I feel your pain. I feel your pain, I do. If you approach it like that, then people are going to get a sense that you understand them and that will go a long way from converting them from a visitors to a prospect. They will reach out to you because they'll feel like you understand their pain. That's a great way to position your company as opposed to bragging about all the stuff like look how great I am. Like, nobody cares. Like have empathy for them. That's the way to go. The third thing you need on your website is an easy step by step plan or method. How do you actually handle clients when they come to you? Do you have a step one, we do this, a step two, we do this, and a step three, we'll finally get that. It needs to be easy, it needs to be simple, grandma needs to understand it, or five-year-old needs to be able to uh, understand it. What this does for your visitors, it basically shows that you have a method to your madness. It's very reassuring when you're landing on your website, knowing that that person has a methodology or a step-by-step -step method. Now that step-by-step -step method doesn't, you don't wanna make it super complicated like a 12-step program, you know, that's, that's going to be like really crazy. You want three step or up to six steps at the most. Now the fourth thing you need on your websites are testimonials. I see a lot of websites that have either too many testimonials or not enough. The rule of thumb for testimonials, it's either two or four maximum. And you want those testimonial to have a picture of the person, the name of the person, and something that identifies that person, either a city or a company or a title. The ideal content for a testimonial needs to show that it solved the problem. So it needs to have a before and after. So I had a problem with this, I hired this company and they solved my problem and now my life is better. That is the ideal testimonial. And the reason why you need to have a picture is people want to see themselves in the testimonial they're, they're seeing. In other words, people like me say this. Now don't confuse a testimonial and a review. Everybody knows that a testimonial is not objective. It's always going to be great. Like, who's gonna put a bad testimonial on their website, right? It's like, nobody is going to do that. So you and I know that the testimonial is only going to say nice thing. So the purpose of the testimonial is twofold. First of all, 
what are people like me are saying and kind of like show me a before and after kind of idea that is going to help me make a decision to say hmm I should hire that person now the fifth part of your website should be a section about failures to act the failures to act section is actually fairly simple you need to tell people if they don't act if they don't do what you're doing here is going to be the most predictable impact on them this section will give people a sense of urgency or actually describe some stuff that they may have not thought of remember that all our decisions are based on either a benefit I'm going to get or the failure of loss on the other side if you don't act or hire my services to solve that problem this may happen to you and you don't want that to happen now the sixth thing you need to make sure that you have on your website is clear and precise calls to action now we talked about it in the above the full section where you need to have a clear call to action but your calls to action need to be in multiple places of the website because people are going to be scrolling so you cannot just have the call to action at the top it needs to be repeated in multiple sections of the website in the middle and towards the bottom now you can change up your calls to action they don't all have to be the same thing because people will respond to different calls to action so the one all the way at the top can be get a quote today but another call to action in the middle can be request a consultation and then towards the bottom call us today for more information with the phone number that's going to give people multiple ways to get in touch with you that may resonate with them someone may want to quote someone may resonate with a consultation and someone may want to pick up the phone and call you you need to give them multiple calls to action that will get people to actually be in contact with you which is really what you want and the seventh thing you need on your website to convert more visitors into prospects is a video a recent survey on website conversion showed that a video on your website will improve conversion by 80%. The content of the video should be just about the same thing as your website. It needs to start with the benefit. You know, they don't want your services. They want to know what's in it for me. What are the benefits to me, right? So if, you know, for example, for the dentist, you know, if you want to have a smile that you can be proud of, then I'm the right dentist for you. And also show some empathy. People respond very well to empathy. Like tell them that you actually feel for where they are. Make sure you include in the video the failures to act. If you don't act, well, this is what could happen to you. And then close with a strong call to action. Like call me today or fill out the form on the website wherever it is and get in contact with us so we can solve your problem now if you do those seven things on your website this week I guarantee you you will convert a lot more visitors on your website and to prospects and grow your business so get it started now okay so this does it for today if you have any questions or comments put them below you know I love to hear from you and before you leave please subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss a thing ciao